hello guys welcome to the channel paper over here today i'm coming to you with a new build to soul beast for roaming can even be used in zerging stuff like this great for 1v1s struggle a bit if it's in cooldown like harder to recover and struggles a bit without numbers either you burst people or you get out if you can that's how the general idea of this build will be so in this build we're gonna go exactly as our previous soul beast condition beast uh, the traits are the same we go skirmishing wilderness survivor soul beast with uh, vigor on dodge uh, high hidden bars for bleed damage and lighting on your feet since we're using short bow uh, wilderness survival with child of earth extra condition cleanse and immobilize on demand extra condition damage because of the dagger and survivability trait of course soul beast with protection vigor and removing of embedding movement conditions on merging with a bit as you see and siphon with poisons since we still have a good chunk of poison on dagger offhand and uh, poison volley also apply conditions so it is acceptable and we even get a single poison stack aoe from the cry rune if we use entangle our elite scan and leader of Zayak, uh, since we're using actually two stances. So, uh, why is this build exactly? This build is a dream of being a four range ranger. And since also I'm this kind of person who doesn't like melee for a lot of reasons. Uh, and on the top of that, that if you are melee, like let's say this is your target is front of you, you'll be hitting melee, moving to the side, trying to be in them, they move behind you, twitch your camera, stuff like this. And this is actually giving me um, motion sickness. So I'm trying to avoid melee most of the time in the game. Like in BVE it's great. Weapon um, mobs doesn't simply run from you. They stack on you. And you'll be hitting. And uh, whenever you want to dodge. You just dodge a mechanic or something. And go back again. So uh, while fighting players. Situation can be completely different. And this is why. If you like me. If you get motion sickness from playing with melee or stuff. This build is going to be great if you want to uh, play um, Conditions of Beast. The idea started with uh, one of you guys giving me a um, uh, change on uh, my previous beast. He used Dagger Torch like me, but uh, if I remember correctly, X uh, Dagger on the other setup. So not short bow here, actually Dagger Torch. But this build I didn't like much because it has no CC since he's using an owl, I'm not using even um, this one, the wolf, uh, which has knockdown on melee range. So the lack of CC and the existence of melee and the biggest problem, no auto attack condition except dagger, which uh, doesn't even have it uh, like greatly on the chain. Like as you see, uh, first attack, no, second attack, yes, third attack almost irrelevant like condition but not that much and the last attack is the biggest one so you don't really count on auto attacks in melee especially if you have no cc like what you count on catching them with entangle i didn't really enjoy the build this much um i mean it works especially if you're on 1v1 and you can calculate your attacks you may even think you don't need cc because um Every attack will matter, so the kiting they do, whatever, you, they still take in with damage, so... But CC can be defensive, can be for catching people, especially in outnumber. Uh, like you hit someone, they either lose a cooldown to only get out, so they didn't take the other uh, damage, or you're stopping them from attacking you, and this is... A lot of things go to CC, this is not the video for them, but having no cc at all was a problem and the worst problem was auto attack condition damage is only on dagger not from range so this is the one i came up with uh, as you see for our weapons we use axe dagger and short bow most of the time we're gonna stay on owl but if you're fighting a lot of power you could uh, move to um, the wolf and this is our skills if you use fight a lot of power you could completely leave stances or if you think you can handle yourself really well against condition players like you avoid their damage you can go through and go into and you can go quickening zephyr um, it's up to you we don't need extra damage from things like vulture stance or stuff like this we don't count that much on poison and honestly um it's not worth it to have extra damage instead of extra stun break 
always two stump breaks if you remember what I'm talking about when I said that in previous videos so how do I play this build in general I would try to beta dodge like um, um, I use always sharp and stone almost off cooldown since it gave me 30 seconds and it's only cooldown 24 so I completely can hit someone with 10 stacks of bleed and almost have it immediately after so I use it almost off cooldown when I engage I use um, like beta dodge or something from auto attack I mean if he didn't dodge it he takes sharp and stone so great fine by me if he did the next one will probably will not be a dodge so um, you can hit with um, skill 5 talon watch an ammunition so it's already refilling uh, if you can beat another one uh, goes uh, first by it goes it again goes uh, skill 2 if they melee on you you can dodge your skill with this you can dodge after that you can dodge extra if you have to use a lot of dodges for example i'm not talking how the fight's going so we have two dodges with lightning reflexes uh giving us vigor this immersion giving us vigor uh, and we have dodge on here we have dodge on the other weapon set here and also when we dodge an attack once every eight seconds we get another extra four second vigor so we have a lot of vigor in this build we can dodge a lot actually uh, let's put back as it usually will be like i said every skill from those can do tremendous damage and if someone dodge one it will not do the other if they do the other it will not do this one if you can hit this to someone's face with full corruption it reach about 22k or even 23 this one's about 13k about 6k and a half this one is about 7k so every hit can do a lot of damage people have to either avoid or keep cleansing and even what, uh, your sharpened stone can do about like with full corruption almost 29k so and your auto attack just too fast so you do want a lot of damage all of the time the downside of this build as you noticed first thing it is 90% projectiles projectile 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 and all those skills are projectile the only skills that are not projectiles are skill 4 and dagger your beta attacks of course and um, the bit merge the one you kite with which you probably will never really use it to fight uh, if you trying to catch someone is another case and in tango which any hit that is not a projectile can deliver sharpened stone so whenever we trying to um, avoid a reflection we would use something like entangle we would use this to dodge and try to kite away from the barrier a bit until it's gone and we start hitting again and through that we can even hit with sharp and stone so we can even do the sharp and stone entangle combo to go to do a lot of pressure even in a projectile reflection um, the other downside this build doesn't have enough sustain to be really crazy and outnumbered or um, like survive completely we can't um, kite with dagger anymore like uh, when we use dagger we can kite with this which a skill doesn't affect by um, cribble or chill and that make it great even if you got your softness corruptness or anything uh, if using owl or wolf you could use it before the other um, cooldown use it again and use it again you can kite to tremendous areas you d we don't have that with the build anymore we actually have an access so um, this is why owl become really beneficial since it will move us 1200 not as 100 uh, as a wolf which most range in the game about 900 so you'd still be in with no real way to get out like you running to reach uh, some place like a rock you can hide behind it or line of sight but simply kiting if your enemy is not melee weapon set you're not really you didn't kite on something like uh, wolf because it was only 900 uh, 800 so he's simply following you and you're still in his range even owl will not really be that beneficial against something like longbow beast but they usually keeping their distance like they're standing here for for example like they're standing here and hit you if you merge with something like owl and start kiting you are farther than 500 drains and you can start line of sight so that's a good beneficial thing but if we're fighting a lot of bar we're probably using um, 
the wolf. So keep that in mind. But the Dolex stance would help you to not be captured by crippled chill and uh, immobilize even. So this build works great, like I said, in 1v1s, but not that much in uh, outnumbered. But I liked it more than previous Soul Beast build in um, Zerg fights, actually. It's still a flanker style when you catch people who stand around, not really fighting with the Zerg this much. But if there is no reflection at any moment, every hit that you do can do tremendous damage. Like if you're using Sharp and Stone and you hit only something like Winter's Bite, you already applied to everyone that it hit about 13k, like I said, was corruption. And from this is about uh, 2,900 something like that let's say that the entire summary of the damage is about 16k yeah something like that so it's crazy it's either removed supported or hit through like you know so um this is it for the build i hope you enjoyed it and would give it a shot i've been having a lot of fun in world vs world with it lately so tell me what you think of it give me feedback if you try it and i'll be seeing you next time bye
monsters Everything that brought me alive Oh, we're all like monsters Playing with the monsters They brought me alive But got no alibi